I closed my last video with a promise to make another video about shadowing my wrench and socket collection, and I am going to make that video, but I decided that I was going to need some very small end mills for that project, and Amazon just let me know that they're not going to arrive for another month. So to fill that time, I'm going to knock out a little project that's been on the to-do list for a while. No, it is not an actual ejection seat. That would be impractical, dangerous, and illegal. And we all know that impractical is bad. No, I'm just going to repackage my garage door opener into something that's a little bit more fun. I want to put this red button somewhere prominent in my center console and then use it to actuate my garage door. I love impractical projects, and this one is aimed at nothing more than getting reactions out of my passengers. And it's actually a really good starter project for people that are new to electricity. If you look at this board, you'll notice it has a button. Also known as a tactile switch, closing this switch makes electricity flow to the circuit, eventually opening my garage door. The red button is also a switch, it just looks different, and I can add it in parallel to the existing switch. That way, pushing either button will trigger my garage door. So if you understand this diagram, then you understand all the critical parts of this project. The rest is just making the button look cool. The body of the new garage door opener will hold the button, a faceplate, and the circuit board, but before I could build it, I had to measure the space where I wanted to place it in my car. It was pretty cramped in there, but eventually I got enough measurements to sketch something up in Fusion 360. It's a fairly simple shape, but I'm going to 3D print a sacrificial shell to see how close I got my measurements. And it looks like I got something wrong. I knew that the sides of this cavity weren't square to each other, but apparently my 2 degree draft angle was too conservative. I could take more measurements and do some math to calculate the correct draft angle, but I think I'll just take the lazy man's route, which is just guessing at a different draft angle and making another mock-up. My second attempt was a much better fit, and I probably could have tweaked the design just a bit more, but this is one of those don't go chasing perfection project moments. In the end, this is what I came up with for the body of my new garage door opener. It's going to wedge into my center console. There's a threaded hole for the button, a recess for the board, and a boss that will accept a screw to hold the board down. Again, it could probably be better, but this will get the job done. Despite oversizing the threads by 3%, they were still pretty tight. I had to run the button into and back out of the housing a lot before they wore enough to allow me to thread the whole button in by hand. Running a tap through the boss prepared it to accept the board, which very handily already had a hole that was large enough for a nylon 1032 screw to pass through. Now I can design the faceplate. It doesn't have any practical functionality. I mean, I could leave it out of the project and still actuate my garage door. But I'm going to engrave a piece of aluminum with big red letters and make it look like something that came out of a cockpit or a submarine. And combined with a red button, I'm sure it's going to get a few reactions out of my future passengers. I screwed the stock onto my spoil board and started engraving the letters. I'm using an inexpensive 30 degree V cutter, and I know the letters look a little ragged right now, but I'll run a stiff brush over them and they'll clean up just fine. Yeah, sorry about that, but I totally blocked the shot here. Just trust me though, the red color on the letters was applied courtesy of a Sharpie paint marker, and I actually applied it twice. After letting it sit overnight, I scraped off the excess paint and sanded down the whole piece. Um, all in all, I was really happy with how the letters turned out. With text in the rearview mirror, I was able to start working on the button cutout. Now, I usually use my CNC router to cut wood and plastic, which are fairly forgiving materials. You can cut them wrong, but they're pretty easy to machine when compared to aluminum. And it's been a while since I cut aluminum on this setup. My first attempt was with an eighth inch single flute upcut end mill, and it ended in disaster. All it did was turn the aluminum to goo, push it around, and gum up my part. Speed and feed calculators on the internet aren't any good in this sort of situation. Those guidelines assume that the end user has a high mass, high rigidity machine, and my rig is made out of aluminum extrusion with V-groove bearings, so I need to figure out my own parameters. Then I had an idea. I'd actually made the part that I'm using today for stock on my machine something like eight years ago. It was part of a gift for my boss when she managed to survive an entire year at the company, and I still had that file on hand, so I looked up the speeds, depth of cut, and tool diameter that I used back then. And it turns out I needed to go really slow and take really shallow cuts. And that took forever, so I upped the speed and depth of cut just a bit on the outer profile of this part. I left a few tabs so it wouldn't go flying away, and the remnants of those tabs disappeared quickly with some help from a small file. So now all the parts are in hand, but I still need to connect the board to the button, which I've sketched as this red switch symbol. At first I thought I was going to have to solder a couple of leads directly to the pins on this tack switch, but look really closely. Do you see these shadows? 
those are traces that extend from the switch to a couple of unused holes in this board, and they're probably designed so that models with more features could be made from the same board design. And how lucky am I? There's already pre-drilled holes in this board that are directly connected to the circuitry where I need to add my button. All right, finally it was time to attach the wires to that board. I really thought that the soldering portion of this project would be tricky for me, but I only had two connections to make on this board, and neither one of them gave me any trouble. Final assembly wasn't especially difficult, except that I think I distracted myself and ended up taking this gizmo out of frame a lot while I was putting it together. And the video is so bad that I really can't edit it into looking better, so I'll just speed through this footage. Hey, look at that. It works. And installation's pretty easy. All I have to do is drop it into my center console and it's ready to go. Right, so if you're wondering why I went through all the trouble of making this gizmo, you need to understand that comedy has never really been my thing. So this is a setup device. People are going to get into my car and ask, what's that for? And I need to have a few responses loaded up because I very rarely pull off an impactful joke. I'll throw a few up on screen, but do me a favor and leave some of your own in the comments. I really like hearing thoughts from my YouTube audience, and uh, if you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next project.